povo continua o mesmo. Ignorante. Inferior. O que é a existência é a continuidade do sangue. Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around I've got a box set which is a deep, deep horror movie rabbit hole that I was kind of peripherally aware of before the box set came out from Arrow Video. And when it did, I, I didn't get it immediately, but then I thought, give it a go. Go down the rabbit hole, which indeed I have. And it is as weird a horror movie rabbit hole as I have ever beheld. It's a little Brazilian thing called Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe with Jose Moica Marins as Coffin Joe, also known as Zeta Cachal, which is Portuguese for Coffin Joe. And he did a trilogy of movies featuring this weird and dangerous and amoral character, Coffin Joe. Starting in 1963, there was one in 1963, there was one made about 1967 and 1968, and there was one in 2008. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. I had a bit of fun working out how to say Zeta Kashal, and when I did, I went to Google Translate because, of course, everybody does that. And the weird thing is, I got a Portuguese translation of how to say it, and then I got the Australian translation of how to say it. I'm going to play them for you now, and they're a little bit different, so sit back, get ready to chuckle. Zeta Kashal. Zeta Kashal. Australian accents are a little bit weird. Beautiful big chunky box set there inside the mind of Coffin Joe. He's pointing at you on that side. And on the other side, you see his overgrown fingernails, which grew bigger in the second movie. I've, I've only watched the first two movies. I haven't watched the third, and I've just gestured so the thing's zooming on me. So stop that, you bloody AI. I haven't watched the third movie yet. Now, the first movie, and the movie titles are pretty good in the translated form. The first one's At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul, which is pretty full-on for 1963. The second movie from 1967-68 is This Night, I'll Possess Your Corpse. Well, Coffin Joe is an undertaker, so that, that's not unreasonable. And the third one from 2008 is Embodiment of Evil. Of course, they have Portuguese titles because it's a Brazilian movie series. But those are the English translations. And this box set is crazily good. Unfortunately, they are a little bit expensive for Australians. But this one, I think, is worth it because it took me to a totally different horror universe than the one with which I'm familiar. Now, what I'll do first is I'll show you the box set. And then I'll talk about my experience with the first two movies. Starts out with a J card because they all do. And I took the J card off to, for ease of showing it to you. There's the J card. And I'll pop that up there. I'm putting this in 4K. So you can freeze on that and see all the extras and everything that's in there. There's over 900 million... There's over 900 minutes of stuff in this box set. So even though I paid slightly over $100 for it, don't tell Sal, it's worth it. There's a lot of stuff in there. Now, I'll show you the box set first. Then we'll go a bit deeper into the weird world of Coffin Joe. Now, these are reversible covers because there's a lot on each one of the Blu-rays here. There's the first one. At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul, which is a pretty good illustration demonstrating the kind of stuff you see in that first movie. It's got a reversible cover as well. And there is the other stuff that is on that particular disc, The Strange World of Jose Moyica Marins. So you've get, got that in there. Ah, put all that back, which is fascinating to watch. And each one has these little reversible cards, which are really, really cool. beautiful artwork some of it's very simple some of it's quite complex and there's a bit of advertising stuff from arrow there you get coffin joe's business card hang on let me just put that right not only that you get coffin joe's business card which is very cool you're not going to find many of those around and it's a little details like that to make a box set really really fun here's the second one this night i'll possess your corpse and when you see the women covered in spiders down there, the actresses are actually covered in spiders, tarantulas during the movie, which is crazy. The, the scenes on that are fantastically bad in the best possible way. There's your inside. There's the other side of it, The Strange World of Coffin Joe, which is a different documentary. And here is your reversible cards. 
beautiful artwork on these. And my microphone is suffering from some kind of erectile dysfunction here. Not me, the microphone. I really like that car. That's probably the best of them. The third disc, which is kind of extreme, is The End of Man. A weird thing which is kind of adjacent to Coffin Joe. There's your inside. There's the other side of it with The Awakening Beast, another movie. There's a couple other cards. The End of Man and When the Gods Fall Asleep, which is a great title too. There's the other side of them. We're going to have to spend some time exploring all of these extras because a lot of them aren't part of the trilogy, but they're very much um, Jose Mojica Marin's other movies, some of which he plays characters that are kind of like Coffin Joe. Sometimes he's playing himself uh, and explaining to people why he's not Coffin Joe. And there's also an anthology movie which has Coffin Joe as the host of the anthology movie. Lots of weird and wonderful stuff here. Then we got more. There's your third movie which is the one from 2008, which gives closure to the trilogy. There's your inside bits. The reversible one, The Embodiment of Evil, that's the English title of that third movie in the series. Let's look at the cards. I love the artwork on these, they're just the best. And there's your, um, there's a playlist and a little Coffin Joe thing there. We're still going, there's one more disc. Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind, which could be a description of this channel as well but isn't in this case. Her hellish flesh. Again, that could be a description of this channel. And here are your cards. This one, this one I like here. This one I really like the look of. But there's your cards. Chunky poster, which I'm going to keep in the box set. I'm not taking out the frame, which is, you know, I could. There's your reverse side. I can't show you that bit because it's got busty substances in it. Busty substances. <laughs> we all know that the sight of a naked breast is going to obviously set off the YouTube algorithm and it will have vapours and ask for smelling salts and all that kind of thing. So leaving that aside, there is some nudity in these movies. There's a book, Coffin Joe Against the World. I'll just do a, I'll try to do a bit of a flip through here. There's your cast and crew for the movies. There's a Tim Lucas um, essay there about Zeta Koshal. There's a better picture of Coffin Joe. Fantastic looking rooster, that one. I'm not holding it straight for some reason. And there's a couple of other essays in there as well. Really good stuff. So the box set, and I'm going to post a link to where you can get this on Amazon. And if you use the link, I get a little bit of a bump from Amazon, which goes to an Amazon gift card so I can buy more movies for the channel. It's a vicious circle. But this box set is crazy tons and tons of information you're not going to get anything more complete about coffin joe than this box set now having said that who the hell is coffin joe in the first movie coffin joe is an undertaker in a small town near sao paulo in brazil who is totally amoral he's a nician superman type He's obsessed with having a son so that his bloodline can continue. To do that, he needs a woman. All the people in the town dress casually because it's a rural town and people are basically working class and work with their hands for a living. But Coffin Joe wears a top hat and a cape. And so throughout the series, he has this obsessive quest to find the perfect woman who is in a sense a kind of Nietzschean superwoman to take his seat and have a child. That is his only focus in the world. He is hated by everybody in his village because he is totally anti-religion. He mocks religion. He mocks superstition. He mocks belief of any kind. He is the atheist's atheist. That part I'm on board with. But the way he goes about it is not good. He kills people who get in his way. He assaults women. And he will do anything he can to move his agenda forward. And the weird thing is that even though he's a totally against superstition, totally against belief, Joe in the first movie comes up against real ghosts and totally denies that they're ghosts and totally denies the supernatural aspect of them. In the second movie, he goes to hell and it has what he says is a hallucination of hell. Now, the second movie, like the first one, is in four to three aspect ratio and in black and white. But the hell scenes are in really saturated technicolor, which is eye popping and weird. And it looks like a hell cabaret. When Joe comes back, he's a bit shocked by it all. And then he decides it's all hallucination. Which it may well be, but there's some evidence that possibly not. 
Now, as I said, I haven't seen the third movie for 2008. What I do know is that at the start of the third movie, Joe is pre-imprisoned for 40 years. He gets out in 2008 and continues his quest to have the perfect man-child to perpetuate his bloodline. That's all I know at this stage. I have seen a little bit of a documentary about Coffin Joe, which gives a, a couple of spoilers on that, but I'm not going to indulge that further. I actually stopped watching the documentary so that I didn't get into the spoilery territory for the third movie, The Embodiment of Evil. So that's who Joe is. Now, culturally, there isn't a horror movie character and or a horror movie host, which indeed Jose was, for a very long time in Brazil. He died in 2020. It has had a greater cultural impact on any country. He is, as the box set says, the boogeyman of Brazil. He's the Freddy Krueger of Brazil. He's a Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers of Brazil. He had an enormous cultural impact. Parlayed that into a whole bunch of different things. He did the anthology movie series. There were documentaries about him. There were kind of metafictional movies where he plays himself playing Coffin Joe and trying to dissuade people from believing that Coffin Joe is real. He did a whole bunch of different TV series. Some of them were horror movie host series, some of which were series where contemporary issues were discussed in a panel format with Marins as kind of Coffin Joe in that format. So he had an enormous cultural impact as a cult figure in Brazil. In fact, in 2019 or 2018, there was actually a Mardi Gras float in Rio of Coffin Joe, an enormous Coffin Joe done as a Mardi Gras float. He was a kind of unprecedented and never to be equaled creation, which had a cultural impact on an entire nation. And it's now honored by this wonderful, weird box set. I love this kind of stuff. I love finding out about things I don't know. And even though as far back as VHS days, I was kind of aware of this weird Brazilian horror thing called Coffin Joe. But the only copies of it I ever saw were really, really, really bad VHS tapes. And so I never got into it. All of the Coffin Joe stuff that I've seen from the box set so far has been restored. The, the transfers are fantastic. The restorations are on point. The sound quality, the video quality, everything is terrific. And because of that cultural impact that Marins had in Brazil, the Brazilian government put money in to do these restorations because it was culturally important. He was as important to Brazilian culture as Skippy the bush kangaroo is to Australian culture, though somewhat different. The whole thing about Coffin Joe is he smacked the cultural beliefs of Brazil in the face. He was an atheist. He was not respectful of women. He was brutal. There's a, a scene where a guy and he have a bar fight and he smashes a beer bottle across the side of a table and stabs a guy in the hands and severs his fingers with it. And this is in a movie that was made in 1964. Brazil had never had a horror movie of its own before that point. And then Marius came in and he just went, hold my beer and totally created a landscape of Brazilian horror movies, which he was at the top of. I just love the fact that he did that. Now, Marins himself grew up loving cinema. His religion was cinema. He grew up, his father was running a cinema, and the family lived above the cinema in an apartment, which for me is a perfect way to be brought up. It's a cinema paradiso kind of thing only. The guy ended up making horror movies, but he lived and breathed cinema. And he contributed to it as well, which is the takeaway from Coffin Joe and Jose Mayica Maritz. He gave back to cinema. He was a passionate person who loved cinema and he gave back to it and he changed the cultural landscape of his country by doing so. Fantastic story. I think somebody should do a biopic about him at some stage. There is a whole bunch of autobiographical stuff in this, but I think a biopic of him would be an interesting film to see. I'm not sure whether anybody will ever do it, but if they did, I would get a ticket. If you're a horror movie fan, you might want to pick this one up. You're going to get a lot of entertainment. Have a look. There, there are all the different titles of the different bits and pieces in this box set. Some of them are longer than others. Some of them are Coffin Joe adjacent, but they're all part of that 
industry that Marin's created. I'm going to just enjoy dipping into that and learning more about this. For me, going down those rabbit holes of the cult movies of other cultures, particularly non-English speaking cultures, is endlessly fascinating. There's always one more that you don't know about, and then some group of people like Arrow Video bring out something, and you go down the rabbit hole and you learn a little bit more about cinema, you learn a little bit more about the kinds of cinema other people love. You kind of realise that it's a never-ending treadmill, it's a Sisyphean job. Once you think you know a lot, you find that there's a ton more to know. And that's part of the joy of being a film buff. So that's it for this time around. The box set really blew my mind. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. Most of the people watching these videos aren't subscribed and there's a ton of stuff on the channel which may be of interest to you. So you might want to check those out. You can also help the channel by donating on the YouTube page. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash terrytalksmovies. Next up, we're going back to Science Fiction Saturday again. I've got a couple of good ideas for that. I haven't watched the movies yet, but I inevitably will. And I inevitably will come up with those half-assed observations I make that both delight and annoy the audience. So until then, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Dip into your Brazilian horror movies and just have your mind blown. And I'll catch you next time.